Peace. Salam Aleikum. Malikum Salam. Tata Nazako. And <clears throat> today's video, or this particular video, is um, I want to talk about how to tell if your spiritual worker is authentic. Nowadays, you have many, many people on social media, on the internet. Everybody's getting into these initiations. Everybody wants to be a spiritual worker. They either want to do tarot cards. They want to uh, work with Orisha. They want to be Palero, Palera. They want to uh, be Babalao. They want to be Ayanifa. They want to be Voodoo Song. They want to be Mambo or Hungong or even a Boko. Everybody wants to get into the tradition because the people on social media such as myself we make it look easy we make it look as if we are in some position of uh, notoriety to receive notoriety, to receive praise, and all of these things. To be honest with you, if I didn't have to be on YouTube, I wouldn't. If I didn't have to be on the internet, I wouldn't. If I didn't have to be known at all, I wouldn't be known at all. I'm not in it for that. I'm not in it for the fame. I'm not even in it for the money. Because to be honest, you ain't you're trying to get rich off doing spiritual work. You kind of don't have, you, you don't think big enough for me. I, I ain't trying to get rich off doing no spiritual work. But it does cost money to do spiritual work for people. And we are allowed to make money from doing spiritual work. But you can't be successful as a spiritual worker if you do not get results. <clears throat> Which is one of the reasons why I personally have a page on my website where people can post their reviews from either getting a spiritual consultation from me or they can post a review from getting spiritual work from me. I also ask people to send me their testimonials um, in text messages which I often screenshot and I put onto my social medias and stuff like that people who are getting results from the work that I do from them because with so much competition out here in this day and time you can't really believe everything that you hear on the internet you can't believe everything that you read on the internet just can't. I don't believe shit about no spiritual worker on the internet. None. Not even people that I know don't like me. If I see some fucked up shit about them online, hey, I don't know if it's true or not. The best way to find out anything about a spiritual worker is to talk to that spiritual worker. You can tell in most cases, you can tell when a person running bullshit on you. You could tell. You know what I'm saying? You can definitely tell. But you cannot tell if a spiritual worker is authentic by the reviews that you see on Google, such as Ripoff Report, Slander Pages, or any type of negative shit that looks like somebody other than a client posted it. You can't tell. I have seen people who I know who I know for a fact are true and authentic priests and priestesses and I've seen them people exposing them as if they fakes, frauds, and scammers. 
And as I said in my previous video, those don't be nothing but other priests and priestesses who post up bullshit about the person who they feel threatened by because they feel like that person is going to become more popular than them. They're going to receive more praise, more notoriety, more money. You see what I'm saying? Anybody who does think, like if I got on here and I started talking shit about a particular spiritual work, right? Putting their name all in the, in, the, in the titles of my videos and shit like that. And started talking about that person. Talking about how they a fraud, how they fake, how they not this, how they not that. How could a how could a viewer look at that? How could a viewer look at that as being reputable? How could a viewer look at that review of one spiritual worker coming from another spiritual worker when it's clear that they're competing over business? Only reason that I would say something bad about this person is because clearly I want his business. I want his followers. I want to steal his clients. Okay? So I can't necessarily say that person is a fraud just because that nigga said it or because I said it. You can only judge a person by their works. Anything can be posted on the internet anywhere. Any person could be mad at you for anything. You judge a person by their works. You don't judge a person by some shit that you read on the fucking internet. I read, I be on Facebook and see all kind of little fake articles and shit. So and so died and blah, blah, blah. Celebrity ain't dead. But the internet said it. So you know what happened? Everybody believed it. Everybody was believing it until that person made a video on their live page and was like, yo, I ain't dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, what's this going around that I died? I ain't dead. I'm right here. But people are so conditioned to believe what they see in the media and because the internet has become bigger than the TV, most people watch the internet more than they watch TV nowadays. Used to be the consensus that if you've seen it on TV, it was real. If they said it in the news gotta be real because they said it in the news then we found out that the news lie more than the damn sitcom the news lie more than the sitcom so to really tell if a spiritual worker is real you gotta test that spirit you got to see if they truly spiritual. Do they know what they talking about? Do they use broken sentences? Can they articulate their knowledge in an understandable way so that you can learn? Or they just talk real fast, but ain't really saying nothing. So I come from the hood, you know what I'm saying? I come from the south side of Chicago. I've been around a lot of niggas that talk real fast, but don't really be saying shit. Yeah, homeboy, you know what I'm saying? I can do it like this. I can do it like that. You know, I got you. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is come around the block. We walk the band. We going we gonna to put that thing together like that, man. I told you, just come over here. We walk the You know what I'm saying? All right, nigga, is it going to be there or is it not going to be there? Yeah, it's going to be there, nigga. Okay, that's all the fuck I want to know. All that other shit you talking about don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? And that's how some of these people are in these YouTube videos. And these YouTube videos. And my thing is, is man, test that spirit. A lot of people come to me and they be wanting free readings. They be wanting free knowledge. They want to know, uh, you know, can you help me with this? I mean, like, look, for me to really know if I can help you, I need you to book a consultation. If you're serious, you'll book a consultation. Because first of all, can you even afford me? If a consultation, then I know you can't afford me. I know you can't afford it. 
You know what I mean? You can't afford to retain my services and you can't even book a consultation. You see? So, I need to look into that situation. And, and during that conversation, you have an opportunity to see what I can see. You have an opportunity to witness what I can see into your situation. Like I said in another video, some people can see really good. Some people can read really good, but they can't do spiritual work. And then some people can do spiritual work, but they can't read. When you find somebody that can do both, then you found the jewel. You found the jewel. So you can tell if your spiritual worker is authentic by whether or not they're really spiritual. Whether or not they're really spiritual. Can that person even help you to grow spiritually? You understand what I'm saying? Do you experience phenomena while working with that person? I've had clients come to me, call me up after I began doing spiritual work for them and started telling me that they saw me in their dreams. Working magic, cleaning them, doing all kinds of things for them in their dreams once they went into the Yanganga. You see? This was confirmation. That woman saw that, she never doubted me again. Never doubted me again. She like, oh, because she was wondering. When we had the reading, she was trying to figure out if I was real. That night, she called me the next morning and was like, yo. She was like, I, I, I'm... I'm convinced. She's like, you came to me and you you did something in front of this little pot and this man with green on came out of the pot and he ran out and he did some stuff and then you called him back to the pot. I'm like, yeah. She didn't know nothing about the tradition. She didn't even know we used pots. She didn't know nothing about none of that. She didn't know none of that. She wasn't even from the culture. She wasn't even Latino. She wasn't black. She wasn't white. She wasn't, she was something else. I think she was Indian or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, she wasn't even a part of the culture. And she was able to describe things that she saw me doing in her sleep. You know? So, these are how, these are the ways that you tell if a spiritual worker is real. Spiritual insight. Spiritual wisdom. You know what I'm saying? Intuitive messages. A lot of times when I'm doing readings for people, I'm not even in front of the shrine. You know, when I'm working with people, people feel like I don't have a life, so they just call me. Instead of shooting me a text, they just call me like I'm ready to talk at every minute of the day. Like, I just ain't got shit else to do but talk on the phone. So they call me, and they have questions, and they call me. Some people I allow that for. I do allow some of my clients to call me like that, but I don't like when everybody thinks that it's cool to call me like that. Um, imagine. You know, you got all these clients and everybody just, your phone blowing up all day, all day. And they don't stop. It ain't like people respect the fact that, okay, look, I'm off at 6. You know what I'm saying? They still texting and calling at 9, 10, 11 at night. Like, I ain't got shelves to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I mean? They call me because they need my insight. And they know that I'm always willing and able to give spiritual insight into a situation. And sometimes they need to call me at that 11 o'clock hour because they be about to do some crazy shit. So who do they call? They call their trusted spiritual consultant to find out, man, I'm about, I'm feeling like this. Should I do this, man? What should I do? Sometimes I got to talk people off the ledge. Sometimes I got to be a coach. Sometimes I got to be a mentor. Sometimes I got to be a therapist. Sometimes I got to be a motherfucking... Uh, Shit. I got all kind of shit. You know what I mean? Motivational speaker. I'm every goddamn thing when it comes to helping my clients. You know what I'm saying? I've helped my clients get through trauma. You know what I mean? I've helped my clients to, you know, um, I've helped my clients get through depression. You know what I mean? Um, I've helped them to 
realize things about themselves to help them help them help themselves grow as people as human beings this ain't all about spiritual work and they always tell me the same shit well that's that's what you get for being such so good at what you do that's what you get for being in high demand that's what you get I say yeah I appreciate it but y'all don't understand you know what I mean like when you got that many people pulling on you at once it becomes um, tiresome you know what I mean I'm constantly I constantly stay spiritually clean to myself um, because I'm taking on all that energy on a daily basis so I gotta clean myself every day um, but yeah if you cannot test that spirit then you need to leave it alone ain't no need to Ain't no need to deal with it. Anybody that's not, anybody, any person that's spiritual who does not have a legitimate reason for not showing themselves on the internet and they claim to be on the internet and they can't get on YouTube and make a video, they can't go on Facebook and make a video, they can't post a picture of themselves on Instagram, they that damn scary that they can't fucking get on here but they claim that they with the shit, don't fuck with them. I'm dead ass serious. I don't give a fuck how good they post look and how knowledgeable they look and how scholarly they look. If you cannot get your ass on a goddamn internet, but you claim to be the big dog on the block, then somebody lying. And if you, Mr. Client, Mr. Prospect, looking for spiritual work, if you send your money Western Union, MoneyGram, Walmart to Walmart, to anybody, or even Cash App, to anybody on the internet, and you can't tell me what that person looked like, you don't know that person's name, you're giving me some old made up juju name or some shit. You can't tell me that person's real name. People know my real name. You can look it up on the internet. So many people talk shit about me. You can find my real name. I don't care. I ain't got shit to hide. I know it's lies out there. I know it's slander. I really don't care. You know what I'm saying? But here I am right here for you to see in the flesh. You call me up on the phone, you're going to see me in the flesh. First thing I'm going to ask you is, do you have WhatsApp? No, I don't have it downloaded because that's how we work I need to be able to call you on video I need to be able to show you things explain things to you it's not just oh this no I bring you in through the video into my temple space I show you okay this is what we're doing this is what we're going to do we're going to sit this here for this many days all right I'm about to do an offering to this right here we're going to take this here when we're done with it I'm explaining these things to you I'm showing you step by step what's being done Sometimes clients don't need that. Sometimes they're like, oh, I don't need, I don't need a video. I don't need a video. I can't right now. Just, I know you're going to get it done. Just go ahead and do it. You know what I mean? Everything, you know, that you do for me always works out, you know. And they just, they don't worry about it. But some people, they would like to see it. Some people want to see it. Because other spiritual workers are not doing that. Other spiritual workers are not bringing people and showing them proof. They just sending money and trusting that it's being done. No. Nah. My clients... Once they pay, they see the Nganga. They see what go in it. They see what's around it. They see everything. You know what I mean? First thing I do is give them a tour and explain everything to them. What they're working with. What type of spiritualist they're working with if they don't know. And all of that. These are the things that you need to take into consideration when you choose an authentic spiritual worker. First thing you want to make sure is that person is that person spiritual. Get a reading with that person. See if they are able to even communicate with the entities that they claim to work with. How you gonna tell me you can communicate that you finna call up this one and that one to do this and that, but you can't even tell me that you got even divinatory communication with that entity? Show me that entity listens to you. When I perform consultation, if the client requests, I will position I position the camera so that the client can see the shells fall. And we read the shells together. And I'm like, you see that? That means this. You understand what I'm saying? This is what we got to do in this day and 
time on this internet because doing spiritual work online is becoming a fad. Everybody jumping on it. Every, within the last five years, when I get on here, I got on here in 2015. It's about to be 2020. So for the last four and a half years that I have been working publicly online, I have seen a great increase in new priests and priestesses and spiritual workers popping up everywhere. Popping up everywhere. And everybody looking at it like it's a hustle. You want to truly pay from doing spiritual work, dedicate your entire life to it. Ain't no going back. There's no going back. It's only going forward. Dedicate your life to it, and you won't have to hustle for the money. The money will come to you. Put your heart in it, and you ain't got to scramble for money. You ain't got to fight for clients and compete for clients. You ain't got to do none of that shit. That shit, the, the, the spirits will bring the people to you. Even when your enemies try to block everything in your life, the spirits will still bring what you need to see. You ain't got to worry about all that fighting and all that dumb shit that these people be out here doing, man. You ain't never catch me in a video mentioning nobody name. I don't give a fuck what they say about me in a video. You will never hear me on a video going back and forth with one of these clowns on fucking YouTube. So all of y'all who like to send me them links, ain't no need to show me that shit because I don't give a fuck. People always sending me links. Oh, you know, look, so-and-so saying this about you. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Like, I really don't give no fuck. No need for me to know what so-and-so is saying. And every time it's noticed, I notice I just this is a new channel. My original channel had thousands of subscribers. This is a new channel because I can do this when I want to do it. It ain't about subscribers. I'll catch up real soon. Just keep watching. But the thing is, is every time somebody say my name in a video, my subscribers go up. So what the fuck should I be mad about them for? I ain't mad. I'm thanking them. Because clearly whoever was watching your video where they heard you mention my name thought that I was interesting enough that they should click the subscribe button. So clearly whatever weight your words had don't mean shit. They, you clearly came off looking like a hater in their eyes because now they want to see what I'm talking about. So it don't bother me. I really don't care. You understand what I'm saying? But, but that's how you tell if a spiritual worker is authentic, man. You got you to gotta look for all of those variables. You know what I mean? You got to look for all of those things today because right now, I will admit, it is a lot of people out here just taking people money and ain't showing them shit. Now, I'm not, I'm not here to say that every spiritual work that a person does for a client is going to be successful. That's not what I'm saying. Not even with myself. There are those times where we do have to make up for what we were not able to do. There are those times, you know. But there are certain things that you need to take into consideration to determine whether or not a person is true to their path or if they just doing it for the hustle. If a person can't show you their face, but they got a lot to say in words, that person is usually the biggest fraud. Because if they was true, they would come on out and speak. Here we got all these wonderful social media platforms that we can express ourselves on. YouTube being one of the biggest platforms. For us to speak on. But yet we have spiritual workers who hide behind names and Facebook posts and all this other bullshit. Man, I ain't hiding behind shit. If I don't like you, I'll tell you I don't like you. I ain't got to put up no fake report. I ain't got to put up no fake page. I ain't got to put up no lying shit. I ain't got to do none of that shit. I ain't got to do none of that shit. And what I'm starting to find out is really starting, what we're doing, we're starting to do this investigation, right? We're we, we looking into people's lives who be hiding. 
And we starting to find out that a lot of the people, we starting to find out that certain priests in the Afro-Cuban traditions, as well as the other traditions, who are keeping up a lot of negativity between African people of African priests and priestesses of African descent are white people. And these are the people behind the scenes. And, and I'm not saying this as if I have a problem with white people being in the traditions, but clearly some white people have a problem with black people being in the tradition. And I'm noticing that behind the scenes of these people who want to slander everybody, who want to lie on people, who want to post fake rip-off reports on everybody and stalk people on the internet and keep up beefs between this one black spiritualist and that black spiritualist, the people that be instigating that stuff, it be white people. I see the comments on people's pages, on people's videos. Sometimes I go and peek on different videos and I'm, I be looking at people like, yeah, you know Tata so-and-so got another page talking about me. You know, I'm like, who the fuck is this? I'm like, the video ain't even about me. And they put my link in there instigating some shit. So I'm like, you know he got a different channel. Like, they want this person to come and say something about me. To keep beef between two black people. And then when you look behind the person who's actually saying that, it's a white person. And I can point, I know the white person. I can point them out. I can show you a picture of them I know. I know the person. Full name, know the address, know where they live at, know everything about them. But I'm peeping it. And this same white person who will not show their face is telling the Paolo community that they Afro-Cuban when they really white. Just because they speak a little Spanish, they trying to pass themselves off as Afro-Cuban, but they really white. And I noticed that this person takes shots at every black person, whether it's a conscious black person, whether it's one of the people in the black conscious community who are talking about a racial or anything, or whether if it's any black uh, person or a person of African descent who claims to be a priest or what have you. Even people who this individual knows are authentic priests. He's secretly slandering these people on different websites and pages and shit. All this is about to come to light. Racism in the ATR. And anybody who got some information to add to this, this almost like a documentary that we're trying to put together to expose racism in the ATR. Y'all can submit the information to my website. Shouldn't be no a racism. How the fuck are you going to be racist? How are you going to be racist? against black people being an ATR and the origin of every tradition that everybody want to get initiated into is of African descent. That is some ballsy ass, arrogant ass, narcissistic ass, sick ass shit. <laughs> it really don't make no sense. And it's starting to, it's really like more people are starting to realize the racism too. You know what I mean? But Again, you know how I go, man. I have to get the fuck talking about shit after shit. Anyway, those are those those are the ways that you find out if your spiritual work is authentic. We'll talk about that racism shit and all that shit in another video. Uh, maybe I may go live on YouTube and talk about that, or I may do it on Facebook. Probably do it on Facebook. No, nah, I may do it. I may do it on YouTube. Probably get more views on YouTube. We need to. Get it in front of people's faces, man. Because the racism is just... It's, it's really sick. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day... You know, I know that there's some spirits in Palo that don't even like white people. You know what I mean? Like, in Doki Malo... <laughs> does not like white people. Trust me. You know what I mean? So... But in other traditions, it's like, man... Like in Palo, I mean, shit, you can work with whatever Enfumbe you want to put in your Nganga. You know what I mean? So it's a science. Whatever Enfumbe you want to put in your Nganga, you know, you want to put your white ancestor in there and throw his Kriumba at the top of your Nganga, that's, that's, that's on you. You can use our science to bring your ancestors back to life. You know what I'm saying? But when you start using our science to bring your ancestors back to life, just so you can war with people of African descent, 
You crossing the line, bro. But that ain't for me to judge. That's for the impungo to judge. That's for the impungo to look at. But I'm just letting people know that it exists. The racism is very real. And a lot of the spiritual beefs that you see on the internet that are not money motivated are due to a small band of European, American born, Caucasians who want to keep dissension amongst the priests and priestesses of African descent and African traditional religion. And I'm just going to leave that at that. And if anybody want to know who these people are, I'll gladly tell you. You know what I'm saying? It's a small group of them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying all white people in, Af in ATR act like that because I meet. I met beautiful people of all ethnicities in all of these traditions. I don't get into the racism shit. That is some low level as mortal as bullshit to me. You know what I'm saying? To me, everybody can be good people and everybody can be assholes. I don't care what color you are. So I don't get into all of that shit. If you think on a racist level to me, then you're really the primate. You're really the monkey. You're really the fucking low level as homo erectus genus homo as type of species because you're thinking in caveman mentality we are in an age of Aquarius where intelligence where spirituality rules supreme not bestiality not savagery and definitely not no weak ass racism for people who feel insecure and inferior because of some skin color that is some weak ass shit you know what I'm saying so, but at the end of the day, it'd be all about power and money anyway. They trying to keep us from tapping into this power as a whole. But I get it. You know what I mean? It's all good. But until then, definitely like and subscribe to this to my like my video, subscribe to my channel, click the links in the description. You know what I'm saying? If you want to get in contact with me on any of the social medias, you want to follow me, you want to ask me a question, you want to book a consultation, so forth and so on. And I'll see y'all on the next video. Peace. Assalamualaikum, alaikum salam.